Hello and welcome to the Dungeons and Dragons podcast UK. My name is Yasmin and I will be the DM. This is the first episode of our new campaign, The Secrets of the Silver City. If you listen to our prelude episode that was released last week, you should have a good understanding of the setting, storyline and characters. If you haven't yet listened, you can find us on any major streaming platform or you can find all of the information in that episode on our website, link down below. Now, I do have to apologise for the audio quality for these first few episodes. These episodes were recorded via mobile as we had not yet had our audio setup arrive. So after a couple of episodes, you should notice a definite improvement in our audio quality and it should sound a lot like this. So without further ado, episode one, from small acorns to big trees grow. So he sent you down river on a fast ship, small ship with a skeleton crew on it, and you will be catching up with Laura, if the time is correct, at the entrance to Greenfest. So, what do you want to do? You, Laura, are at the entrance to Greenfest. Can I roll a spot check to see what is around, who is in front of me? Roll a spot check. Spot check, so my spot is... Ah, uh, no, I'm blind. Uh, that would be um, a <laughs> three all in. <laughs> I can't see a thing. <laughs> oh, here we go. <laughs> D&D. Yeah, you're, you're stood there to the entrance of Bloom Rest. In, it's quite a well fortified village. There's kind of log walls built all around the edge of the village. And right at the entrance, there's a couple of guards stood there guarding. Um, there's a little sign saying, welcome to Gloomrest. And in front of you, dead ahead, is a tavern. It looks, for all intents and purposes, just like a normal village. There's people bussing around, you can hear children crying and playing. And that's it. What would you two like to do while you're on the road walking towards Gloomrest? I have a scan for somebody with a hat with yeah. corks hanging off it. Right, roll we'll spot check. Here's a D20. This one, there we go. Plus your spot check model. That's a six. Would you like to roll a spot check as well? Me? No problem. Yeah. I've got a seven. So five plus a... plus a four. So I've got a, a nine. So you've got a nine and a seven. Mm. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh, I'm going to need to lower the DCs a lot here. I his, think. his visor's fallen down over his face. <laughs> Clunk. <laughs> right, so as you're walking along, you're busy paying attention, looking for a woman wearing a hat with corks on the on the brim, and you don't notice that you stumble slightly over a twisted tree root, and you look a little bit silly. Uh, but anyone who notices is off who. Laughs at you a bit and then chips over the same tree root. <laughs> uh, but you can't see anything. There doesn't seem to be any sort of danger in the surrounding area. So, what are you going to do? Keep on walking or? Carry on walking Keep on towards walking. the sea. Okay, what are you doing at the entrance? You're just standing there. Well, I've got this package to deliver. So, um, I can see the inn. Um, I'm going to assume that I've, I've been travelling down river from Thraben. So, um, and then I've had this walk. How far have I walked, roughly? Um, you have walked... How far in, away from the river is it? You've maybe been walking about half a day to get to Bloom Rest from where they dropped you off. They literally dropped you off where the um, road crosses over the Silverland River. So, so sort of three or four hours. What, what time of day is it? It is mid-morning. You were dropped off quite early. Yeah. So you've been walking through the dawn almost, and it's yeah, it's mid morning. The sun's reasonably high overhead. You could say it's probably about eleven o'clock, maybe. You know, if people are busy doing their own thing. There's people farming in the surrounding areas around the tree line. There's it's just a normal village. Right. So sort of a small village or medium village or you know, is it is it a lot of hustle and bustle or just it's just got, just it's a small <laughs> what, Yeah. Well, so. most most places do in this world. Roll me other spot check. Another spot check. Okay. And you two can both roll me a spot check as well. Well, it's a little bit better. It's a six, all in. A six. Nice. Not, not a lot better. 
It's double what I had before, though. Oh, oh. God. oh God. Right, what have you got? Go in. 17 plus 1, so that's 18. Right. And I've got a, a 19 plus 3, so that's a 22. <laughs> Right, okay. <laughs> so as you round, round over a small tump of grass, the pair of you, you manage to catch eyes on a woman just stood in the middle of the road. She's wearing a, a hat with forks around the edges. She's wearing some nice leather boots. And she seems to be, you could say she's trying to look at the village, but she seems to be looking completely the wrong direction. Um, you're not sure exactly what she's doing, but she does look slightly confused. <laughs> I think we should uh, go over and say hello there, come in. Well, yes, yes, let's, let's go, let's go, let's go, go, let's charge, yes, <laughs> let's, let's go. Right, so can we walk across to uh, yeah, you, and you, ask you, her, across. she is who we think she is. Go for yes. it. Laura, Laura, is that you, Laura? I shall turn and go. Huh? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Who are you? Hey, I, I, I'm, I'm Kuhn, Casper's brother. Casper? Casper? Oh, Casper. Oh, you, Casper's brother. Yes, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm the youngest. I'm, 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 he told me to uh, lock, lock, lock a few. I had a bit of a mission. On a mission? Yes, a quest! What, uh, oh, a quest. Right. Uh, what, what, what's up? What's up? He's, uh, he sent you here to find me? Yes, I asked him. We, 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 we need somebody, somebody, somebody really, really, really powerful that magic and stuff like that just to help. Well, mate, I. I, well, I don't know about powerful. Um, I, I have a few skills. Um, they get, oh, yeah, they yeah. get me by, you know, but oh, I don't know about powerful. I'm sure Casper didn't pick it up that much. He said that you were really, really handy in small scrapes. And he uses you a lot, so I just assumed. Okay, mate. Well, well, we'll have to talk about that. And, and, and who's this point brother here? Hello oh, there. I'm, I'm Ogvar. Ogvar. Okay. Oh, well, okay. It's nice to meet you. Well, I take you together. Yes, 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 yes. I mean, not in that sense, but I take you together. <laughs> oh, no, no, not, not like that. Not like that. No, 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 no. I'm a ballad. <laughs> yes, well, I suppose you find it a bit difficult to get all that armour off too quickly. Right. Does anybody want to go for a drink? Because there seems to be, I, I think I can see an, an inn. The, the guards are giving you like, a very funny look right now. <laughs> You are stood in front of them, and they are looking extremely perplexed as to what's going on. Uh, uh, yes, yes. Uh, long travel. Big journey. What do you think, Hogwa? Oh, yes, yes. Very good idea. I think good tavern be capital. Okay. Okay, so you're going to the tavern? Right, well, I, I might as well lead the way, seeing as I was previously a bit confused, but at least I can spot the tavern now, I think. And, uh, uh, right. I'm going to head off towards the tavern then, presumably these two in tow. Roll me a knowledge local, please, in order. A knowledge local check. Uh, apparently I know nothing. Uh, yeah, actually I do. Uh, that's an 18 all in. Right, 18 all in. Okay, so looking at this tavern, you realise that you haven't really been far enough, stood far enough back to take in the full size and scale of this tavern in front of you. This tavern is well known throughout Innistrad, mostly through Nefalia, but places like Thraben, people in there are aware of this place. It's quite a famous spot. This tavern is called the Cracked Acorn Inn. This is Gloomrest's only inn and tavern. The Cracked Acorn caters to all 300 residents of Gloomrest providing them a safe haven and travelling merchants, mercenaries, cathars, they all use this place to stop over rest on their journeys between Junal, Haven, Gold and Thraben. The most notable thing about this inn, which is, gives it its fame, is that it is built around a massive oak tree. This oak tree rises from its centre, reaching a massive height of 65 foot high. 
and the entire inn is built around it. So the trunk's in the centre. The trunk is in the centre of the building and the building is literally quite literally built around it. The walls of the ground floor, if, actually if you want to allow me a spot check. Okay. Oh, that's a five all in from uh, Alora. Mm-hmm. It's uh, a 15 all in on the 30. Okay. So Alora, you're, you're really focused on this massive tree head craned up looking to try and see the top of it really. Human and Olvar, you notice a lot more about this inn and it's a lot more of the finer details you notice. You can see that it's roughly 110 foot long, maybe say about 80 foot wide and it's 30 foot high. It's not, it's, it's a long building basically. The walls of the ground floor are constructed from large heavy slabs of stone but as it goes up onto the first floor it transitions to exposed blackened wood beams and daubed exteriors. There are many small narrow windows on the ground floor, but they again transition to larger, more gothically arched ornate windows filled with colourful shards of glass. These are elegantly recessed into the walls on the first floor, and dormer windows in much the same style lay on the roof. The oak tree that is in the heart of this tavern provides this massive canopy that blankets the roof and provides a lot of shade around the edges of the inn itself. In front of you is a porch. Uh, the porch extends about 10 foot out with stairs leading up to it and the front door is really an incredible feature. You having been raised by a stonemason, although you're not particularly uh, well versed in the craft, even you can see that this is a nice doorway. It's been elegantly carved, it's absolutely beautiful and inside it is a heavy oak door and it is carved with images of oak trees and acorns studded with large iron bolts. The particular feature of this door is the um, door handle. It's tarnished with dirt and age, shining kind of like a mottled gold almost, but it shows a cracked acorn. Everything about this inn screams kind of opulence, very over the top. It is the big thing in Gloomrest. From one of the porches to Porting Bees, there's a small wooden sign. One side has a picture of a cracked acorn, and on the other words, hot food, real ale, warm beds. Around the surrounding area, kind of on, off, off of the front porch, there's bits of cobbled together benches, you know, using boulders, wood, tree stumps, anything they can get their hands on, which patrons are obviously sit on outside. What else would you like to do? I suppose we should go inside. Go inside, yes. Yeah. And order, I, I'll order a round of drinks for everybody. Okay, so you walk inside, so you clomp up the steps and you go into the door, it's quite a heavy door, you've got to put a lot of weight into opening it, and you open up the door and what you see is on the board in front of you, and that is the view you are greeted with. All around the edge of this room is what is almost like a, um, a raised level, and this area is filled with seating and then steps down into the middle. Although it's early in the morning, there were still regulars there having a good old pint of ale or stout. This raised area is about 10 foot wide. It's, it's not particularly wide at the entranceway, and it drops down again into uh, a lowered area. And this lowered area, there's four pillars in the middle, and these four pillars are supporting the weight of the next four up, and they are they're the massive arching beams and entryways, and it's all ornately carved. There's been a lot of love put into this place. The seating on the edge, and obviously the key feature, is the tree in the middle. The most eye-catching thing about this tree is the fact that the staircase to the upper levels runs through it, basically. The staircase is carved out of the tree trunk itself, spiralling up towards the next floor, you can only assume. If you want to make a spot check, everyone, again. Oh, goodness me. You know, I am 14 all in. 14 all in. That could be an 8. I'm 10. All in. 10. 8 all in for Laura. 10 all in. So, Laura and Kieran, you're both kind of, you know, you're just marvelling at this site. You know, it's, it's quite an impressive thing. However, you, Ogfar, you can see that this is truly exquisite carving work. It depicts battles, the art change of Avacyn, many monsters. 
Um, whoever has carved these pieces has managed to capture the motion and emotion of these scenes and the ethereal beauty of the art change of absinthe. You can tell from being raised as, uh, with stonemason, you do have some knowledge of carving work, although not a lot, but you can see, you can just about see that each bit of carving was done by a different person. There were slightly different styles and variations. And you can just make out that this was probably done by different people over time. So, so yeah, what would you like to do now? Do you have to go to the bar? Yes, I'd like to do. Yes, please, yes, please. What, uh, let, let, let's go and get a drink. Let's see, see, see what's... Hey, shall we? Yes, yes. But well, that sounds like a good idea to me. I'll have a point of ale. That's OK with you. That's fine with me. What to buy that is. Oh, it's just point of ale. Don't mind you. Have you got any meat? You wander up to the bar, and it's mid-morning. The bar's not busy. There are a few people around the edges of the room, but they've got their drinks already. The man behind the bar, he's hes quite tall, and he looks like he might have been so for. And he goes, yes, we've got mead. We're a bar. What would you like? He looks like he might have been a what? A sailor. Why? Why, why would... Why what? Why would he look, why would he look like a sailor? He looks haggard, dog-eared. Eh? He's still got his fair trousers on. His pirate hat. His eye patch and his parrot. <laughs> 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 oh, okay. cool. he, do, you just, you get the sense that he might have been a sailor. You've worked with sailors for most of your oh, life. Yeah. You get the sense that he might have been a sailor. He does look like he's been, had a hard life working. You know, he's got rough hands, calluses. He doesn't look like a typical bar owner. Uh, yes, yes, my good man. Uh, I'd like uh, two pounds of ale and a glass of mead, please. How, how, how much would that be? He turns his back to you. You think it's kind of rude. And he goes and he gets you drinks and he, he doesn't smack him down on the bar, but he puts him gently down, he fills them up and... <sighs> Gold piece. Gold piece? Oh, OK. No problem. Okay, so you can knock a gold piece off your, off your sheets. So yeah, you've got two hours of the meat. Okay. Suppose we should. Well, th- well, thanks for that. K- K- what did you say? Your name was Kewin. 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 Okay. Well, thanks. Meet your dog. Well, thanks for that. Um, yeah, that's very welcome. I'll just um, I'm going to turn um, raise my glass to Ogbar. I'm going to turn around and find somewhere to sit down. Presumably, there's going to be lots of spare oh, seating. Oh, yeah, there's lots of spare seating. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to go sit down somewhere and just find a table and sit myself down. Presumably I think the others will follow me. Yeah, yeah. Yep. We'll follow over. We, we follow over. And uh, I'll, I'll start a conversation. That's okay. okay. Uh, uh. So, Laura, what, what are you actually doing here? Well, your brother, Casper, sent me to do a bit of an errand. I sometimes do errands for him. In this particular instance, he's asked me to deliver a package which I haven't yet done. But I'm here now. I'll get it done in a bit. Oh, 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 right. Okay. Oh, right. Uh, oh, 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 would you need any, any, any kind of help doing that? Well, what exactly has he tasked you to do? Hello, we're, we're, we're on a, a bit of a quest. Uh, uh, he, and he's asked. He, he advised me. I, 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 I just needed somebody, somebody with, to, to, to boost our little company. And and and, 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 and he asked me if I would like to, 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 to a bit of magic. And I said, oh yes, that would be really really good. And so uh, uh, we're on this quest. He sent by the church and. and your name come up and he told us to meet you here. Right. Okay. Uh, and and, and y- y- you're on the same quest, I take it? Yes, yes. Uh, Kevin found me in Thraben and I, I was escorting the, uh, the priest. Now my duties are finished up there, so I was contracted to Kevin. Right. Okay. And Casper sent you to find me? Yes, yes. Uh, 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 Okay. He said he, 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 he said that you were very very handy and, and, and he said he said I, I could do a lot worse. So 
Well, that's very reassuring. How um, do I know that you are who you say you are? I, I, I have, a, I have a, a, a letter from from Casper. Well, Would you like to read it? You well, like I, well, I think I think I just need to see some proof, you know. You ask me for ID. Yeah. So. How old are you? <laughs> if your name's not down, you're not coming in. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I show. Right. So he hands the letter. letter over to you, and it is sealed with Casper seal. You had missives like these before. Um, you can recognise his handwriting on the front. And when you crack the seal open, it's from Casper. The contents of the letter basically outline the situation which Hewin and Ogvar find themselves in. It outlines that Casper believes that he can trust you with this task to help his younger brother. And he believes that you have the necessary skills and he would ask that you help them. And the letter tells you, explains what Kewan's explained to Casper, stating that they have received a mission from the church to investigate the Stryonic Resonator and investigate and try and translate these journals that from Siegfried Dow Chemical Notes and Katarina's journal. So I'll fold the letter up and I'm going to just slide that into my backpack. Okay. Um, I'm going to say to him, well, I'll say to Ogbar and Kewan, okay, I'm, that's fine. Obviously the letter is from Casper and that's, that's fine with me. I guess I've, I've got nothing else to do. So, yeah, fine. Okay, I've been tasked to do something else. So I'll do it. It's what Casper wants, so I work for Casper, so I guess my service is now yours. Oh, fantastic. And I'm just going to sit there and drink the rest of my ale thinking about it. W- would they know more about the actual task at hand? Because I... Yes, they would. Right. So, okay, it, it mentions in here something called a strionic resonator. Does anybody know what, the, what what actually is this mission? What is it? I can lend my services, but I need to know what it is that we're supposed to be doing and why. Right, okay, and for the purpose of this, we're going to do a little flashback. Um, and this will be only with you, Kieran. The theme is set, and you are discussing this matter with Micaeus, the Lunarch. Micaeus has summoned you to his personal quarters. He's heard of you through his cathars and most trusted aides, that you are a promising upcoming young paladin. And he believes that he can entrust you with this task. So you're in his quarters and he starts speaking to you. My child, it has come to my attention that you may be worthy of this quest. It is of utmost importance to us to the church, to Avicen herself. In recent months, it has not been made public. However, the Archangel Avicen herself has been trapped inside the hell vault. Obviously, this is a matter of utmost concern to the church and her peoples. You may have noticed or heard rumours of protections beginning to fail. And we as the church must have absolute authority. We must be here to guide the people along their paths. The situation is as such. We sent Katarina Brunn, a a genius. She was a genius musician and Kazar herself. She, She does remind me of you in a way, with her talent and promise. But we sent her back to her home in Stensia, with an item, a most holy object, called the Stryonic Resonator, where we hoped that she would unlock its secrets and be able to free Avicen from the Hell Vault itself. However, we didn't hear a word for quite a while, and we grew concerned. We sent our own Cathars in to investigate, to try and make contact with Katarina, but alas, tragedy had befallen, and she had been taken by the vampires of Stensia. Her own village turned against her. 
Her husband, Siegfried, he was a alchemist of great renown, but the loss of Katerina drove him mad, and our Khazars had to lay him to rest, so to say, and we have been left in quite the perilous situation. Our Khazars managed to retrieve both halves of the Stryonic Resonator, for Katerina had split it, thinking that her husband might be able to help with her research. And when our Cathars returned, they returned with several items which are of utmost import to the church. However, we find ourselves at an impasse. We cannot decode the texts. We received Katerina's personal journal and Siegfried's alchemical notes. However, they are both written in code and we are unable to break it. It is our hope, the church's hope, our only hope, that you may achieve what we cannot. Thus, I am asking you, I am, I am begging you to help the church, help the people, help the Archangel Avicen. And so I must task you with finding some trustworthy people, concealing your connections to the church, for the scourged cultists have pervaded every part of our society, and they only seek death and destruction of all holy. And I beg you to decode these texts. We have no other hope, we have no other choice. If we do not decode these texts and free the Archangel herself, I fear the worst will happen to this world. I fear that the demons may return. Well, I, I, I've been asked by the church to uh, uh, sort these these notes and, and, and codes. Well, it's not really my expertise, but Casper uh, said that you, you could help us. Basically, I have no idea. So let me get this straight. You've you've got some notes. What is it? Is it a book? What have what have you actually got? I got uh, 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 some 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 notes in in, in in on one hand, and I, I have some codes on the other, and, and, and I can't I can't make out them fitting together. They they just do not come spot. Can you bring them out onto the table? Bring them out. So at this point. As you hold this, because what it is, is you've got a journal, a nice leather bound journal, and um, you've got a, like a barren stack of parchment note wise. And as you bring the journal out onto the table, the front cover opens slightly and something slides out onto the table in front of you. Do I see this? Everyone sees this. Mm. Oh, okay. Oh. It just slides out onto the table. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna look at it, and I'm gonna look at Corinne and say, "What's that then?" I don't know. I've, I've, I've never seen, seen, seen that before. Have you? Oh, right. Do you mind if I have a look at it? No, no. no. Go ahead, forward, go ahead. I'm gonna reach forward. I'm gonna pick it up, and it's just—is it just a piece of parchment? It's a folded over piece of parchment. It looks quite delicate, though. Right. I'm gonna gently open it and have a look at inside it. So this piece of parchment, it's old, it's faded, it's well worn. You can see where it's been folded and like unfolded and refolded again and again. It's got those kind of fuzzy frayed edges where, you know, the, the uh, folds are starting to disintegrate slightly. And it's kind of blurry, it's old, you can barely read it. You've got basically no information on it. But from this you can maybe get a guess that whoever has kept it has kept it for sentimental reasons. And you can just make out a couple of snippets of words and you can see the word Rionix, um, my dearest, and Drunau. Do we so, all see this? Well, she's got the piece of letter, so I'm... Can I ask her what she's saying? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Anything, anything make sense to you, Laura? Um, well, there's only a few words left on this. This is a really old piece of paper, you know. Um, whoever has written this, it... it, it it's literally. I'll lay it on the. I'll lay it on the table. Okay. Slide it across so that Ogbar can see it. And just say, well, if you're looking for a starting point, 
I'm guessing that whatever it is is somehow connected to Drenau. I've never been there. I've heard of it, but I've never been there. Has either of you ever been there? No, I don't know. I don't know. believe so. Well, I've sailed down that way, but I've never actually been there. I mean, sailing's one thing, it's on the water, but it, I've never been there on land. I don't know much about it. Uh, does anybody know what Rionic? Ry what was Rionic? What would right? Is that it looks like part of words? Anybody know anything about that? Would you? Would it possibly be strionic? Strionic. Strionic. Well, it might be. You, 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 have you heard of that before? Yes, yes. Uh, there, there was a mention of a something called a strionic resonator. Strionic. What what it actually is, uh, I have no idea. Right. But I all, all, all I know, these notes and this journal are to do with the strionic resonator. So, so the strionic resonator, the notes and the journal, some kind of code, and they all go together somehow. Yes. yes. This 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 is your quest to try and yes. work this out. Yes. Right. Okay. I'm going to scratch my head. I'm going to push the corks around on the front of it. And then I'm going to pull the hat down a bit further. And then I'm going to pick up my pick up my ale and have a long, deep sup on it. I'm going to look at Ogva and say, Right. Well, what do you think we do then? Well, it's, uh, it's obviously in some sort of cipher or code, so uh, we were hoping that you might have some experience in, in your circles that someone might know what to do with these codes. Any organisations or any people you've crossed paths with? All right. Well, I don't know anything offhand, okay, just from looking at that, but what it does say is it does say Drenau. So the only thing that you've got, if you've got nothing... No, no, nothing at all. Then... The only thing to do is, is you know, follow the clues, isn't it? And then we'll see where it goes from there. It's obviously some kind of riddle, but it, it says Drenau, so I okay. reckon that we need to go there. So, at this point, you're in town on business of some sort. I am. Does that need to be it completed? Does. So I believe it does, yes. So, we... So, I'm going to drain... I'm going to drain my the glass and then put it down on the counter and then I'm gonna well put it down on the table and I'm gonna turn to the others and go right I've got a job to do for Casper and I need to complete that before I can do anything else plus it earns me a little extra coin you know so I'm gonna get that done um you're welcome to come with me um and I'll go and get that delivered so with that, I'm going to rise to the table because I need to complete that task first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'll stand up as well, yeah. finish my uh, mug of ale, pop that down. Okay, we'll come with you then. Yeah, and I'll... Right, and off we go. Uh, okay. I'm going to turn around at that point and start filing back towards the door. Oh, <laughs> I'll look around the room first. I'm actually now going to have a proper look round and think, wow, this is, this is really nice in here. It's really nice. And then I'm going to head for the door. It's morning time at the moment, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, it's so. About 12 o'clock now. Yeah. Okay. Where are you going? I have no clue. <laughs> hey, so you're still outside and <laughs> you've got no idea where you're going. Uh, is there something. Right, can I. Is the package in my backpack? Yes. Right. I'm going to take my backpack off, I'm going to look in my backpack and I'm going to get the package out that um, that Casper has given to me and I'm going to see to whom it is addressed. It is addressed to Evitt Hallow Strike of the Cracked Acorn Inn. <laughs> <laughs> Evitt Hallow Strike. Yep. <laughs> I think they've gone the wrong way. <laughs> um, I'm going to stand there and I'm going to stop, sort of, I'm going to pick my backpack up, shove it back on my back, look at the parcel, look at these two and go, <laughs> 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 
Right, follow me. I'm going to swing round on my heels and go straight back up the stairs and back in through, lean against the door, push it open and go straight back into the inn. And I'm going to walk directly across the upper level, down the stairs, across the base and over to the bar. Ooh, wait, I think she's got a bit of a problem. She's gone for another drink. <laughs> why, 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 why are you going back inside? Mm. She must be thirsty. <laughs> yes. Right, so we'll follow as well. After that. I'm going to the bar and I'm going to, on the bar, say, Excuse me. Yes. I'm looking for every hollow stripe. That would be me. That would be you. I have a parcel for you. I have a package that has been sent for delivery. Ugh, the epitome of professionalism, you. Having a drink before you do your job. I wouldn't complain. You got paid for it, didn't you? Nice. Well, whatever. I'm going to slide it across the bar, push it with my finger across the bar, say, I believe that is for you. That has been sent from Casper. He picks it up, looks at it, turns it around, goes, yes, well done. Flicks copper at you. Mm. I'm going to look at the copper with complete disdain, and then I'm going to look back at him and say, what's that? A tip. You call that a tip? I just did, didn't I? <laughs> I'm going to get the coin, I'm going to put my finger under my thumb and flick it back across. Wrong text image check. Text check. Right, dexterity is... Sorry, right, okay. Uh, right, that'll be a whole nine mm. for Laura. Yeah, you, you kind of flick it, your finger makes a loud, like, kind of smack on the top and it, it doesn't go very far. At all. He looks at you and he's got a bit of a fine. You don't have it then. Picks it back up, shoves it in the pocket. And... I'm just going to look at him, shake my head. I'm going to turn around and think, well, I'm, I'm just going to say to him, well, I've done what I was contracted to do. So I'm turning around and I'm walking away and I'll stomp huffedly through the middle of these two who are behind me and just head back for the door. As you start to go, he, he says, well, Obviously, you like earning a bit more than usual. I do have a small task, shall we say, that would be available for completion. At this point, I've still got my back to him and I've stopped partway across from the bar and I'm just listening. I'm listening. I have a, a few bottles of uh, fine whiskey that I, uh, that I hid from the wife in a... Uh, a small shed about half a day's away from here. You and have a wife? She puts up with you? <laughs> yes, we've been married 30 years, thank you. Jesus, straight. And I, I, found, I find myself in need of it. I have a, a debt I need to repay and I owe him a bottle of whiskey. As much as it pains me to do, I would pay you to retrieve it for me. Is this going to be another copper piece? It will be if you continue with that attitude in my pub. With all due respect, and I'm not sure there's any Joe, you could always go and get it yourself. But yes, I'll do it. Because Casper would want me to. Fine. It's half a day's walk towards the northeast. It's a ruined, not so much a shed, a ruined house, you could say. I scored it away under some of the foundations in a chest. There should be four bottles there. So if you bring them back to me, I'll pay you a gold piece per bottle. So as you stood there in the inn and you've just finished your conversation with Evett, um, you hear from out the back, Oh, Evett, my love, you aren't terrorising the customers again, are you? I'm going to look at the others and, gonna, and I'm going to sort of mouth quietly. Why? <laughs> <laughs> shrug my shoulders. And that's all you hear from the back. Okay. I'm going to look at Everett, give him a weak smile. I'm going to turn around and head back for the door again. Okay. And I'm off. You following? Yep. Following? Cool. I, 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 I turn around and look and I go, yeah. <laughs> and follow. <laughs> <laughs> he raises an eyebrow and just carries on wiping his glass. 
So right, we're gonna. Uh, I'll go through the door. I'll go back outside. Um, obviously, it's going to be still probably late morning, isn't it, at this stage? Um, yeah, still about twelve o'clock. Okay. Also oh, about midday. Right. Okay. Fine. Okay. So uh, I'll turn to the others and I'm gonna say, well, I reckon that we should just head northeast now. Um, seeing as we've had that instruction, he, he reckons about half a day. Um, so so we'll we'll head off to the northeast and. We're looking for a derelict house. Oh, so it, it's going to be sort of getting on for Teaser, dark yeah. when we get there. So, right, I, I, I would say, is, is everybody got substance? I think we're going to end up yeah, we, staying out overnight. We should all have seven days worth of yeah, rations we, in the pack. I'm going to tap my pack and say, yeah, I've got rations. I've got a, I've got a tent. I've got everything I need in here, I think. Okay, you making your way off then? So, okay, yeah. Yes. Right, so to get out of the, um, out of the town, you have to go back through the front entrance, back through the main gates, and then you're off, and there are no paths for this, so you'll be trekking through the wilds. Okay. Up to you. So, Ogma, uh, what is it that you do? Where do you come from? I come from down south, the hinterland. Uh, my father was a mason. I'm a ranger. Oh, Kissigan. Yes. We're going to make our way that way. Can everyone make me a survival check, please? Survival, yeah. Is that a 20? Or yeah, D20. D20. It would always be a D20 when I ask you to roll unless I specify. Terrible. Oh, dear. Yeah. Survival. Oh, my gosh. I've got eight. No, I've got a four minus one. <laughs> so that'll be a three from Alora. I've got 16 plus a one, so that's 17. Okay. Oh, nice. So, Elora and Ogvar, you're just kind of meandering along, and it only seems to really be Kieran who's got any idea where Northeast actually is. So, you're kind of relying on him at the moment. So, yeah, you're walking around, and it's flat plains, mossy tunnocks, kind of small little copses of trees. There's not really much around, I say, but you keep on walking. And... At this point, I'm just going to add that I am walking. If obviously if uh, Kieran knows where he's going, I'm going to be slotted in behind Kieran. So obviously he's going to be taking the lead. Right, the first hour passes without any troubles. It's a fairly calm day. It's clear, not too much noise or anything about. Um, and yeah, you continue on. Okay, nothing happens the next hour. Okay. Uh, just tell me when you're going to stop at any point or make camp or do it. If you want to do anything, just tell me. And we'll sort it. Okay, nothing happens the third hour either. Right. Uh, I don't know about anybody else, but I'm getting a little bit peckish. Yeah. Do, do, do you think we should come and find somewhere to, I don't know, uh, have a small camp, just have a quick bite to eat? Yeah, well, I haven't eaten anything since last night because I've been on the road to do most, and, well, obviously I had the beer, but that's sort of sitting on an empty stomach, so I guess, yeah, let's do that then. Okay, yeah. Yeah, happy with that. So I'm going to pop myself down, find um, a log or something along the road. Is uh, roll one? survival. No. Right. I'm changing my dice at this point. I'll just put that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, that's a whole three minus one there for a log. That's a two. <laughs> yeah, you, you sit down on a log and it's, it's you think it's dry. It's just a bit mossy and slimy. Got a bit of dirt on the back of your trousers now. I'm going to stand up and brush my backside off. Ew. Are we going to go for rations or are we going to hunt for something? Uh, well, I'm going to sit down and eat some rations. Because right. uh, um, hunting's not my best forte, apparently. No worries. So, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'm going to take half a ration. Can I take half a ration, dear? Yeah, take half a ration. I'll yep. take half a ration. Right. I'll knock it off. Yeah, knock it off. Right. Okay, yeah. You do the same? Yeah, I'll do the same. I'll go with the flow, go with the group. Okay. So six and a half days. Yeah, six and a half rushes. So how long are you planning on spending on break? Just half an hour. Yeah, half I was going to say half an hour. Just to get the, the food down. Have a bit of drink. I'll yeah. have, a, have some from the water skin. Dilute the alcohol just slightly. Okay, pick the a 50% range. Uh, 30 to 80. 30 to 80. So if I roll within 30 to 80 here, something happens. Nope. You're fine. Nothing happens. 
So, right, I'm um, going to get up and carry on. I'll, uh, uh, the order is I'll... Is this a path? Uh, we are just no, getting our own... No, you're just oh. basically wandering kind of northeast. Right, I'm going to slot in behind uh, behind Kewin. And by the looks of it, um, Ogbar is kind of next to Kewin. So I'll, yeah. I'll slot in just behind the two of them. At that point, roll me another survival, please. Everyone? Yeah. That'll be a nine from Laura. That'll be a twenty all in. That'll be a three. <laughs> I can't, honestly, I can't get over ten on these dice. I don't know. Hey. I'm going to switch them up. Laura and Kieran. Kieran's been quite on the ball with direction wise, but now he's had a bit of a break. He's got his mind focused on his food, and you're not really paying much attention anymore. And it's a good thing that Ogvar is now a bit more keyed in after shaking off the effects of the beer, and uh, actually knows where you're going, roughly. Okay. So have we got to cross that stream? Or no, no, you're just wandering for a okay. bit. Okay, all right. Um, so you go for another half an hour, yeah? Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, right. Everyone make me spot and listen checks, please. Do we do one, then the other? Yeah, one, then the other. Do spot first. Spot first. Spot, okay. Okay, spot check. New dice, I'll just put that up. Oh, my God. <laughs> you give me yours. I've got, got, got a five all in on the spot. And Eleven. I've all got in. five all spot. in as well. I can't <laughs> roll over. Ten. Okay. Additionally, you can make me a track check. Okay. Yeah. What the track? Yeah. <laughs> That'd be six all in. Right. Okay. Uh, did you say make a listen check as well? Yeah. Just give me a second. Um. <laughs> so. Yeah. You all looking around and you don't really seem to notice anything at all right. and although you're looking at the tracks you're kind of behind Kewin and he's got big boots on and any tracks that may be there you probably aren't going to see okay right. okay if everyone wants me a listen check now <laughs> I'd be 17 it's Morning. official, I am deaf. I just rolled a one. <laughs> <laughs> well, on the other end of the scale, we've got a nat 20. Uh, oh, you got a nat 20? Yeah. Uh, right, okay. So, so oh. Ogvar and Kirin, you both definitely definitely hear a low growling sound. Right. This, would we be able to ascertain? Just give me one direction? second. Okay. So you both hear this low growling sound, and it seems to be coming... In the direction you're heading. Okay. You, Laura, with your nap one. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Yeah. You're just humming to yourself. You can't hear anything over your own humming. <laughs> okay. Right. So, what do you want to do? Right. I've heard of a low... What did we say? A grumbling? Low growling. Growling. Oh, did you hear that? Did, did you eat enough? I thought it might have been your stomach. No, 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 no. There's something... I'm going to cast. Maybe it will be a move silently, Chad. Nine. <laughs> Nine all in, yeah? Nine all in. Oh, okay, no, the growling gets louder, and it seems like it's coming closer. Right, I'm going to go with my Detect Evil. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you cast your Detect Evil, and you don't really get any feedback at all. There is nothing inherently evil in front of you. Okay. Am I aware of him making his trip? Or... No, probably not. It'd be a quiet thing, mm. wouldn't it? Yeah, well, how, how do you want to make your check? Would you want to drop to your knees in prayer, or how do you want to do it? Yeah, drop to my knees and pray. Yeah, okay, so, yeah, you're aware of him just kind of dropping to his knees suddenly and making a bit of a prayer, okay? Kill him, what are you doing? Make me a... God's sake, you're not even trying. I'm going to pop it. <laughs> Oh, well, you're lucky, aren't you? I don't know, lover. <laughs> yeah. Right, um, you could make a uh, knowledge nature if you wanted to here. Knowledge nature, yeah, no problem. That'd be a 12, all in. Hey, okay, with a 12, 
You can probably guess that this is going to be wolves. Okay. They're not uncommon, and judging by the growling sound <clears throat> and how responsive they are to voices, you can probably guess that they are wolves. Okay. Can I relay that to the rest of the group? Yes. Okay. okay. Uh, I think I can hear some wolves. I'm not sure how many there are, but they're usually in packs. Okay. All right. I'm just going to stay at the back here. Is that all right? And as you are checking for evil, checking your knowledge on this, into the frame walks two wolves. <laughs> Their heads down, growling teeth bared, and everyone run initiative. So, initiative, how do we do initiative? Oh, so, you roll your d20, yep. and then add your initiative score, and your initiative is there. Oh, okay. Yep. <laughs> you go. I got five. <laughs> oh, I got 19. Uh, that's an 11 all in from a lawyer. Okay, so. Combat begins. At the front, we've got Kieran. Behind him, to the west, we have Laura, and to his east, we have Ogva. In front of them are two wolves, one directly ahead of Kieran, and one to the northeast. And to start off combat, it is Ogva's turn. Okay, so from here, I'm going to uh, draw my short bow. Yeah. Is that my movement phase? Uh, yes. Okay, yeah. So, um, I can do an attack phase from here, can't I? Yep. So, I think I am within my 30 foot range. 5, 10, 15, yep. 20, 25, yeah. To um, use point blank shot, which adds one to the attack and damage. Yeah, okay. So, okay. roll to hit. So, that is going to be. Roll a d20. d20. And Plus your attack bonus. Uh, I'm good at eight. <laughs> Plus a one, because if you're point blank. Yeah, me and nine. Okay, and that does not hit. Okay. So the arrow flies past the wolf, embedding itself into a tonic a little way back. And next up we have a Laura. Right. I'm past the Night of Lunia. Duration is ten minutes. Casting time, one standard action. Silvery radiance created by the spell emanates from you in a 30 foot radius and dim light extends for an additional 30 feet. Beginning one turn after you cast this spell, you can choose to expend somewhat more of the light of Lunia as a ray of light. You must succeed on a ranged touch attack with the ray to strike a target. You can make a single ranged touch attack that deals 1d6 points of damage or 2d6 points of damage against undead or even outsiders with a range of 30 feet. Um, you can choose to fire one additional ray with the same characteristics either on set run. So one round at one d6. Right, I'm going to cast Light of Lunia. You can't. It takes one round to cast. Ah, right. I'm going to prep to cast Light of Lunia, and I'm going to right, stay. So this round, what you're doing is you're casting. I'm casting Light of Lunia this round, which will not take effect until, until next round. round. So I'm going to stay well and truly hidden behind Kuin. Okay. So next up is. The wolf. Okay. And the wolf is going to lunge forward for Kewin. And he goes for a bite. 15. Does 15 hit your AC? No, 16. Okay. So he takes a lunge forward to you, snapping, growling, slathering at the jaws. And he just gets a bit of your armour and growls and backs off slightly. Okay. Next up we have Kewin. What? Well, I'm going to use a quick draw. Okay. Quick draw. Okay. And I'm going to attack with my sword. Okay. Roll to hit. Is that an ID8? Uh, no, no. Roll your, one, roll your 20. Okay. Add your attack bonus to your sword. 14. Okay. And a 14 hits. Nice. Roll damage. Seven. <laughs> Plus, have you got any additional on there? Yep, two. That's nine. Nine okay. points of damage. Okay, so you deal nine points of damage to this wolf. As it stood there backing away from you, you, you quit draw your weapon and it slides out its cheek and you bring it overhead and you slice down this wolf and you draw a massive gash from its right shoulder right down across its chest and it yelps in pain. Okay, and next is Wolf P. 
Okay, Wolf A is going to go and he is going to attack Ogfar. Okay, okay. I'll slide him up. Yep, yeah, and he's going for you and he's charging at that point. So he gets a plus two to his attack. Okay. Ten hit. Against my AC. Yep. Yeah. No, it's 14. It's be... Okay, so he charges straight towards you, and as he charges, he stumbles a bit and he completely snaps and lunges and it just swipes past you, missing you. Okay. Okay, and we're back to the top of the round with you, Alpha. Okay, um, so if I've got my bow right now, is it a movement phase to swap because I'm close quarters now? Or can I just, I suppose I can still use my bow, fine. You take your bow at a disadvantage because you're so close. Okay, so. Could um, I change to my Yeah, that would take up your movement though. But that would be it. Yeah. Okay. Means he's... You can take a five foot step, but that would be a movement. Obviously to attack it, you need to be within attacking range, so. Okay, so if I take one step, a five foot step back to put some distance. You wouldn't be able to, uh, you'd be able to tap your bow, yes. Would that provide a second opportunity? Uh, yes, because you're, yeah. you're leaving the square, yeah. So he would attack again. you get a chance to attack you, yeah. Okay, I will... Swap to my uh, battle axe then, silver yeah. battle axe, and uh, stand the ground. Uh, it's uh, an attack bonus of three, so a roll. Roll, yeah. So that's a uh, 20 all in. What did you roll? 17 plus three. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, that hits. Okay. Roll your damage. Okay, so that's 1d8 damage. Ooh. Seven damage. Got any bonuses on that? Uh, should have some attack bonus. No, nope, just damage. Attack bonus. Damage. Damage is 1d8. I feel like you have your strength on as well. I've only got a strength of, I've got a mod for of zero. Oh, that's why so then. That's okay, why. Yeah. yeah. So you've rolled seven points of damage. Okay. Does he get that? Does he roll 20? It's only if it's a natural choice. Yeah, yeah, if it's 20, then you roll. Yeah, so it'll, it'll change for each weapon. Okay. okay, so as this wolf lunges at you and misses it on its charge, it's stumbled forward and you've quickly drawn your hand axe and you simply lay into it and you take a massive chunk out of its neck there's kind of blood <coughs> spurting about it's not dead but it looks absolutely horrific nice. it is on its last legs you could say laura well i've got i can get line of sight straight between ogvar and uh Kuin, so i've prepped um ray uh, was it Light of Lunia? So I'll let that rip. Um, okay. So I'll attack with that. Yep. Roll. So roll to hit, um, and that will be oh, five. All in. That's going to miss. No, your bolt of light wow. flies straight overhead as it stumbles from this massive attack it's just received and doesn't hit at all. Cool. Is there anything else you'd like to do in your turn? Sure. <laughs> no. No? Okay. So, next up it is Wolfie, and Wolf is going to go for you again, Kieran. So you're right in front of him. And he's going to go for, again, a bite. 13 to hit. 16. Not a chance. No, it, it suffered from this slash across its chest, and it goes to bite, but it yelps in pain and pulls back as it stretches the wound. And that's its turn. I'm going to attack yet again. Okay. With Roll to hit. Uh, I miss that miserably. I use. I get caught. Oh. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, you you go to take a swipe at it, but you're a bit too eager seeing the state of this wolf, and you just miss just the distance, and you just miss it. Okay, and then onto the wolf again. It's going to go once again for. You are Clark. Okay. Yeah, it misses. <laughs> <laughs> Roll for three, it's fine, it misses. <laughs> okay. um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a bit terrifying for you now. <laughs> okay. Uh, cool. It's just putting up a very front, but it doesn't really want to try and go anywhere near you. Okay, back to you, Olga. Okay, so try and get me around the provoking the attack of opportunity. So if you move out of a five foot range around it. Yeah. You provoke an attack so it can get a chance to attack you. So it's like you're retreating, basically. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. can do a total disengage, so you run away completely. Yeah. That's the whole of your movement and action. I mean, you can move round it. Yeah, yeah. So I can stay as long as I stay within it. Yeah. I'm okay. Or you can totally disengage <laughs> if, if you want to. 
Okay, um, I will stay engaged. I might move myself round one step this way towards its side to give Alora a bit more of a open shot at it. Okay. Um, and I will, because of that uh, battle axe is still in my hand, I will have a go with that again. Roll to hit. Okay. So that's going to be um, 13 all in. Doesn't hit. Okay. Just miss. You just clipped some of its fur off. It's got a nice bold spot now. <laughs> Closure. Okay, <laughs> and then we are on to this bad boy. Okay, and he comes in. And as you're both, fo- as you're all focused on these two wolves, you're annihilating at the moment. Unbeknownst to you, from this side, which I cannot reach, <laughs> um, comes in another wolf. Oh, that's coming in. That's yep. coming in behind. Me. And he's going to come up to Elora no. <laughs> and he is taking a swipe at you. Oh, what the... Um, does a 21 hit? Oh. <laughs> 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 yeah. Don't worry, it wasn't natural. Um, it was only an 18. Okay, and it's going to do... Strength! <laughs> D6 plus one damage. Three damage to you. <gasps> for what it was worth. Wow. Okay, and it's on to you, Laura. Right, on obviously being surprised, being attacked, I'm going to spin around on the spot. And then I've got Light of Lunia cast, and as a reaction, I'm, I'm just going to release the second bolt of Light of Lunia, or at least attempt to, anyway. Okay. Um, um, that will be a 20 all in. Nice. Uh, 20 to hit, you said. Yes, roll damage. Roll damage. Uh, 1d6. Um, and that will be four points of damage on that wolf. Right, okay, and we're on to and the wolf in front of Kieran. Right, okay, the wolf in front of Kieran is going to take a five foot step towards the east. So if you just shove him around. No, no, uh, sorry, west, sorry, that's my fault. Oh. Yep. Okay, and now he's moved round. He is going to attack you, and again this time with flanking on him. <laughs> Does eleven hit? No. No, <laughs> nothing hitting you, is it? Oh, <laughs> right. He stalks round towards the west, and he lunges in for another snap. But you know, he's, he's just caught you with the side this time, and he's not getting through any of your armor. So that's that. Um, Kieran, your turn. Well, I'm going to. Turn towards it. Okay. And I'm going to take a swipe at it. My longsword. Roll to hit. Oh, it's a 19. 19. Does that hit your critical? Yes. Okay, confirm critical roll again. That's a 60. He's gone critical, people. <laughs> He's gone critical. Has he gone critical? He's gone critical. He rolled a 19, which hit the critical threat range, and he's just confirmed it. What do you have to roll to confirm? You have to roll and hit above the AC of the creature again. Oh, okay. Okay. So roll <coughs> damage and double it. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's two. Okay, question, plus, plus two. Four. So eight points of damage to that poor, poor puppy. Um, Ow! <laughs> yeah, it yelps as you cleave your sword right into the side of its neck and you just down to the spine, you just sever it, there's blood spurting everywhere and it just collapses into a heap and it is dead. Um, there's no contesting that one. Okay, um, this wolf after seeing his buddy get annihilated, he is going to turn away from Ogvar and he is going to focus his attention on you, Kieran, and he's going to try and attack you again. Well, attack you for the first time, this one is. And he's not going to hit. <laughs> don't know why I bothered. <laughs> um, okay, and that's him. From the northeast again, another wolf stalks into view. And he is going to charge at Cumin. Because cannon fodder, why not? <laughs> um, <laughs> so he's going to charge up to you and he's going to attempt to hit. 15 hit? Nope. <laughs> right. Okay, um, yeah, he, he charges up to you and he's... I am high, high more, isn't it? 16. Yeah. yeah. Um, he charges up to you and he's got all of the enthusiasm and vigour of an overconfident alpha male. 
and he just crashes into your leg. Nice. Okay. Um, and he gives himself a bit of a headache as he goes. Right, Ogla. Okay. So, currently, I'm to the south of the group. Yep. Because the wolf that is, was attacking me is now attacking the queue in. Yep. If I move, do I still provoke you? You still provoke. Okay. If you, move, if you move out of his area, that is. Yeah, so if he's okay. still within Doesn't he get an advantage because he's flanking me? Because he's... Yes, he would. So that would be an um, advantage to an attack? Yeah. 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 So you'd get an advantage for an attack because you're flanking me. Yeah. Just the wolf's turn right. Yeah, yeah. You'll now get hitting him from behind. It's um, it's not a case of hitting from behind. If, he was, a, if he was a rogue, it would count because it's, okay. it's it well, wouldn't count, but it'd be might class as a sneak attack. But because you've got yourself there and he's here, next time he hits it, it will be counted as flanking because the wolf has got two opponents on it, basically. Within right. fight with it, so yeah. it's immediate space. So if I attack now, I get flanking. Yes, yeah. you get flanking. And what does that? Do? Gives you a plus two to hit. Okay. Right, well, Wallet. being as the wolf has now turned away from me and turned his attention to Kieran, I'm going to take advantage of the situation, strike again with the silver battle axe. Yeah, roll to hit. So that's 15, an 18, and a 2 from Blankish, yeah. which is. Yeah, you hit. Yeah, it's, it's a good one. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot. Roll your damage. Okay, so I'll roll for damage on the, on the d8, and it's an 8. <laughs> Have what? some mercy on the poor thing! God! God. <laughs> yeah, you annihilate that wolf. Um, you swipe at it and you take a couple of legs off. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> it, yeah, it's, it's gone. It's, there's, yeah, no, no, not a chance. There's okay. no chance against you. Okay, and going back to the top of the round, that wolf is going to once again lunge for Laura. Uh, 14 to hit. Oh, yes, just. Just. Okay, so he lunges forward at you. And I use the word lunge too much. Lunge. Yeah, lunge. Mm. It'll be lunch. Yeah, just <laughs> take the end. Uh, it lunch? Take the G Seven out. points of damage. How many? Seven. Right, at this point, I'm now going for a lie down because I'm now unconscious. Right, I'm bleeding so... out on the floor, mate. <laughs> So you've got a party oh, no. member down on the floor, and it's now going to um, squishy sauce. Right. right, the way we're going to do this with death saving throws, we're going to do it like they do in five e. Right. And we're going to go for three saves. Is obviously you're stable, not bleeding out, yeah. and three fails is death. You hit a critical twenty, two saves. Hit a critical fail, two deaths. Right, and yeah. you're going to roll me a death saving throw now. Do you have to do them all in one go, or do you have one per no, turn? Do, do one it this turn. turn or the next Yeah, because you're up next. Oh, I'm up next. Right, yeah, great. Wonderful. Was it anything over ten or something? Yeah. What happens when you roll on that one? <laughs> you lose two. You lose two. Oh, my God. No, it's not. It's a seven. I lie. It's a seven. Okay, you lose one then. Oh, my God. Just mark down one loss right. on your sheet somewhere. Right. Okay. The wolf that was in between me and the law is now dead. So uh, these two are dead and those two. Yeah, that was the wolf yes. that was between me and the law, right? And that one's busy mauling me at this point. Right. So I'm going <laughs> to... Right, because I saw the law of four, yep. I'm going to turn around and attack the wolf that's attacking or just attacked the law. Yeah, okay, roll to hit, make it good. 12 plus. Base attack bonus. No, no, it's be beyond the sheets. It'll be in the hole. Is it your initiative? No. No, what? it's your base attack bonus, isn't it? No, it's there. Uh, oh, oh I see, weapon. sorry, it's a weapon. Oh, sorry, it's yeah. 15. Oh, mistake. 15 hits. Okay, roll your damage. You're doing really oh. good. That's a 7. A 7 plus oh. 2 is 9. Bang on. After seeing Alora be felled by this vicious wolf's bite, you turn around and you take your longsword. And you don't even use the blade, you just smack it with the flat edge of it. And yeah, it's just gone. He's just broken his neck. <laughs> it, it flops to the ground, lifeless, and it's giving her a nice warm blanket now. Um, it's okay. And next up is Wolf D. And he's going to go for you. Oh, hang on, where are you queuing? Have you moved up? Five. 
Yeah. I've moved, turned around, so it's now got a flanking manoeuvre, obviously. No, it's no not. it doesn't. Um, so after that, Wolf's been thoroughly embarrassed by running into Cumin's leg and giving itself a headache. It's going to turn and it's going to go for Ogfar, and it's going to go with 16 to hit. It hits. Okay, and point is going to be two points of damage. Okay. Okay. So is that wolf now? Yes, that wolf is now in front of you. Up in the grill. Yep. Yep, so it's now your turn, Oliver. Okay. I'm going to have to stay engaged, I think. Right. Because I don't want to provoke a mini bob of opportunity. So, we'll go again with the battle axe. Okay, roll to hit. That's that plus the thing, so that is 20. 20. Mm-hmm. 20 all in, like, okay. Yeah, 20 all in, yeah. Roll damage. Yeah, which is a d20, d8, sorry. And that's an 8 again. <laughs> You're <them>. scary. <laughs> You're scary, I don't like it. Okay, uh, Laura, make another death save. Oh, really? Please stuck. don't get a critical fail. Well, I'll try not to, but you know, tell that to the dice. Oh, a nat 20! Right, you're getting two life. You're getting two yeses. So, one loss and two saves. Two saves, yeah. One loss, two saves. Well done. You you pulled it out of the hat. Um, okay, and now we're on to Q. I'm going to turn around again. Okay. Did I kill that one? No, no, no you haven't killed him. I oh, know, I just did it. And I'm going to swipe it. Okay, so that gives you flanking there. So, roll to hit. So, that's seven. Plus two, plus three. It's thirteen. 12. No. Nope. Okay. Don't hit. As you turn, you swipe as you're turning. You just kind of underestimate exactly where this wolf's positioned and you just scrape over its back. It's, it's looking a bit shaved now. Okay. We're back onto the wolf. Uh, the wolf, after feeling your sword whoosh over its back, is going to leap backwards, provoke an attack of opportunity from you. So okay. if you roll to hit. Is that still taking okay. the account? The weapon I'm using. Yeah, yeah, just roll to hit. That's an 11. We just push this 14. You hit, roll damage. 1d8. It's 5. Okay. Um, so as it leaps back and out of the way, you just clip it not good and proper across the face and you slice up one of its eyes. And it then turns as it goes and it goes in to attack you, Kieran. And it gets not going to hit you. That was a fourteen, and that's the end of its turn. And now we're on to Ogvar again. Okay, can I take a five foot step backwards and draw my bow, or is that not allowed? Uh, drawing your bow would be uh, five. No, five foot step. Yeah, that'd be allowed. Yeah. Okay, so I can step back from this one into this one to put a bit of distance between us and yep. draw my bow. Yeah. I'm still within my thirty foot range for my point blank shot. Yeah. So I'm going to try and use uh, one of the silver arrows towards him. A 14 plus... You hit. Three. You hit. Okay. Okay, so (laughs) you hit it, roll damage. So that'd be a d6 plus one because I'm on my point blank shot. Yep. That'd be three. Yep, you bury that arrow into its other eye and (coughs) it flops down to the floor dead. You've defeated a pack of four wolves. They're all on the floor in various different bits. And at the moment, your sorcerer is down. What are you doing? So is she still in the point now where she has to do her saving throws? Yes. Or can I use heal? Heal checks will help to stabilise her with a successful heal check. What would happen if we failed a heal check? She might get another loss. At the moment, we are still kind of in combat because... She's still okay. in the middle of an action, so it's your turn now. So, so hang on, has somebody, somebody done something here? No, no, no. Oh, all right, it's okay, that's fine. So it's your turn at the moment in the order of things, so okay. it's up to you to choose what you do at this moment in time. I am going to try and stabilise it, if okay. that is possible. Yeah, go for it. Roll a d20 and have your heal modifier. Eight, all in. Not enough to do okay. it. You don't do any more damage, but there's not enough to stabilise it there. Okay, no problem. You have a bit of a prod at home, you think, could do some plasters there, maybe. <laughs> um, a slap around the face. Come on, wake up! <laughs> Don't, I have, like, I have actually killed someone using heal check before. 
Right, okay, and Elora, your turn. Oh. Roll a death save. Okay, oh my god. Uh, that will be a ten. Fail. It's a fail. You're on two and two now. Yeah. Okay, and now we're on to Kieran. Well, I'm going to try stabilise it. Please do. <laughs> 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 13 plus 4. 13 plus 4, 17. Yeah, she's back up and with one hit point now. What? That's close. Congratulations! <laughs> I'm going to, at this point, I'm just going to kind of like, I'm, I'm kind of sat at this point and I'm just going to go, Strafe, what, what happened? Like, that came out of nowhere. Okay, so combat is all over, you're free agents again now. Um, <laughs> you're back on your feet with only one hit point though. Yeah. yeah. You've taken no damage and you've... Taken some damage? I've taken two points of damage. Wow, a whole two points. Okay, so what do you want to do? Well, uh, well I, I could certainly do with a bit of a sit down here, and it's, it's a bit of a blood fest, so I'm thinking I just might move out of the area of all the blood and gore and guts because I'm feeling a bit poorly. And I'm just going to move off to the one side and just I'm going to attempt to just find something to sit down on a tonic of grass or mm. a log or okay, anything. Okay, so. Really. You sit down and have a bit of a rest. What are you? What is everyone else doing? Can I have a search round for the two arrows I expelled? Absolutely. Roll a search check. Okay. That'll be 18. Find both your arrows. Excellent. They're still in perfect working order. Covered in a bit of mud. Wipe them off a bit. Okay. Um, okay. Anyone else want to do anything? You have got four perfectly good wolf corpses there. Yeah, uh, I would say it to... What do you reckon? Do might be uh, food or uh, just the fair. Do I have to roll for anything for that? Or? Um, I mean, you can respond if you want. If you want to know if it's edible. Yeah, um, can we do a check to yeah, see whether... Yeah, roll on this nature. Okay. Ten. All in. Ten's usually taken about what the average person and now. I'm, I'm thinking probably the average person wouldn't really know if a wolf is edible or not. Most people wouldn't want to try. So you're not really sure if wolf is edible. You might assume it is. It's meat. The yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah. So I will say... Uh, it's uh, yeah, on the, the side of caution here. We'll, uh, just, just take the fur for now. You've, you've only used half a day's rations each, so you're not too far away from civilization. So we skin. Okay. So we someone can add. Actually, uh, roll me a craft check on that one if you're going to skin them. Me? Yep. Give in, yep. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Two. <laughs> Two. Okay. I mean, you get some patches of fur. <laughs> you might be able to sew them together, maybe. <laughs> but no, you've just got a pile of um, patchy, skinned, lost limbed wolves. To be fair, we did chop a fair bit of fur out of them when we were them, so... <laughs> yes. Yeah, they, they might, you might be able to make a glove, maybe. <laughs> we crafted the forest floor with that. <laughs> maybe a green mask. Next time, maybe I, I should use my knife instead of my sword. <laughs> oh dear. Right, okay. So, what are we doing now? Well, I'm still feeling a bit groggy, so I'm just like watching this take place and I'm, I'm just going to shake my head and shrug my shoulders and yeah, uh, just like to just take a few minutes to just recover a bit, I think. Okay. So, do you want to take a, a rest of any sorts? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm going to have a bit of a curl up for a bit. I think I just, I do need a bit of a lie down. I've had a really long day because I set out early from the ship and it took me a quite, you know, it was a really early. Now the decision between a lot of you, are you taking a short, le- short rest or a long rest? Um, how far away are we from our destination? You're probably about three hours away. Okay. But the, yeah. the night is drawing in now, it's getting dark, but it's probably about, getting on to about four o'clock at night now. In the evening. Oh, so it gets darker. It does get darker okay. right here. Yeah. I'm going to suggest that we just make camp here because I'm, I'm a bit the worse for wear and the dark's kind of rolling in a bit now and we're losing the light. Maybe we could light a fire and, and stuff, you know? Okay. Uh, we will make camp. Okay. Okay, yeah, yes. Uh, take, take, take me on the stack. Okay, so you're setting up camp. Uh, are you lighting a fire? Yep, we will. So if, if you have like the fire wants to roll the uh, survival check. Who's the best survival? Oh, I don't know. Who's got the best survival? Who's better gaming? 
Oh, right, yeah, you're right. No, sorry. <laughs> I'll have a go then. I'll go to 10 plus a 3, I'll go to 13. Yeah, you managed to get a fire going pretty quickly. It's not the fastest you've ever lit a fire, but it's a fire, it's there, it starts going. Okay. Okay. So we all just... Do you want to put the tents up? Yeah, right, we'll put the tents up. Um, and uh, I'll get my bedroll out and uh, a blanket and I'm... I'm literally just gonna crawl in for a bit i think while i'm lying there i need to um just check that rowan backinson that rowan's all right because he's hanging in the inside of a cloak i haven't crawled on him have i God. um right kieran pick me a 25 percent make it good make it good make it good make it good uh 70 to 95 70 to 95. no God, rowan no. backinson is fine Right, um, I'm gonna. Um, he's a little annoyed. I'm gonna open my cloak and just say, "Oh, Struth, I'm really sorry, so sorry, Rowan. I, 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 it just came at me from nowhere. You know what? It's getting dark now. Do you want to go out and get yourself some fodder? I think you should go and get yourself some scrum. You know. So I'm just gonna while I'm just crawling into this tent, I'm gonna open the tent back up and I'm just gonna offer Rowan out and let Rowan just go for a little bit of a stretch his wings a bit. Right. Yeah, He's been so. stuck in my cloak all day. Okay. Are we still sort of like four o'clock in the afternoon or is some time past? No. Um, it's probably about five o'clock after you've got everything set up and ready. Okay. Um, it's dark. It's got to be dark. It's, now. it's getting like, it's getting yeah. quite dark. Yeah. It's not fully dark, but it is yeah. dusk. The nights join early. Here. Rowan's off doing his thing. He's going to get his tea. Oh, but uh, I think we should uh, maybe uh, uh, take a watch. Okay. Okay. Uh, take turns. Good, good idea. Uh, Who's going first? No, I'll, I'll go first. No problem. Okay, good night. You, you, you. Both, you and her Laura have um, took a little bit of a battering. and I seem to be fine, so. Mm. Look, just one word of warning. What's that? Be careful as you step out of your <sighs> tent. I will be scattering caltrops. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Call before you come out. Okay. okay. You telling her this? And Laura. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Oh. I'm taking first watch. Okay. Me and Upper are going to do it. Be careful when you come out. There may be things hidden on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> oh okay, Kieran, I got that. I, oh, I dear. just think I need to lie down. I don't think I'll be coming out anytime soon. You, you, you rest. Do not worry. We have this in hand. I'll try not to have an emergency pee in the night. Then. <laughs> I'll scatter various caltrops throughout mm. the camp. I have 24. Okay, okay, so you're taking first half, yeah? Yes. Okay, let's hope nothing happens in the middle of the night then. I'm going to say it's probably a 5% chance. Give me a 5% chance. I've got. We'll go 45 to 50. 45 to 50. Okay, no, that's fine. Nothing happens in the first half of the night. Are you waking him up to change over? Yeah. Okay. Does this, <laughs> this break me up? I, I don't know, make a listen check. Oh, uh, listen check. Listen. No, that is a seven, so I got an eight. So, I don't know, do I hear anything? Uh, make me a uh, move sign check, please. I got three. <laughs> All in. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you, you wake up. They're not being particularly <laughs> stealthy. Okay, well, I'm well, going to just you know, stick my head I'm, out. I'm, I'm, I'm covered in chain, mate. <laughs> I'm getting, that's true. I'm going to just stick my head out of the tent, and I'm just going to make some... Whistling, peeping noises to see if I can get um, Rowan to come back to me. Okay, I'm not going to get out of the tent. I'm just going to like. What's Rowan's listen check like? Oh, he's got a plus eight on his skill modifier for listen. Well, that was a natural one, so no. Rowan is somewhere else right now. Beep, beep, beep. No, I'll go back in my tent and go back to bed. Okay. Okay, so you're changing over. You're telling him where the couch is. <laughs> 
Here's a map. <laughs> Most of the captains are just around the edge of the tents. If you're staying in the centre, you should be fine. Okay. But what I will tell you is this. All the captains are connected by a rope. Mm -hmm. Pull the rope and I'll all come back. Okay, Kewan, I can do that. Um, can I sit by the fire? Is that safe there? Oh, the fire's perfectly safe. Okay. Perfectly safe. Am I watching till morning? No, 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 no. How, how are you feeling? I was just wondering whether you would like a percolated coffee in the morning. Oh, you know, oh, I did draw, oh, yes, please. I'm sticking my head back at the tent and Struth, how's anybody supposed to get any sleep round here? Go back in there and go back to your beer. This time you hear some angry twittering from a nearby tree. Oh, can I shout him again? Yeah. Rowan! He Rowan! Ignore, he ignores you. Oh. <laughs> well, I'll put my head back in again. Okay, I'll take on the watch stuff on now then. Something like that, yeah. Okay. okay. So pick me a 5%. Uh, we'll go 70 to 75. Yeah, it'll be fine. Nothing happens. Cool. Okay, so you wake up in the morning, and the way I'm going to run healing is if you're below 50%, you heal up half. If you're above 50%, you heal up fully. So, Kewin, you. So, Kewin took no damage there. Ogvar is back up to full, and Alora, you have half of your hit points back. So, we've reached the end of our very first episode, and all of us here at the Dungeons and Dragons Podcast UK would like to thank you for listening. Having you as a listener means everything to us, so please like, subscribe and follow us. We'll be back next week with the next instalment of The Secrets of the Silver City. But until then, make sure to visit our Facebook and Twitter pages for all the latest information. And while you're at it, why not pop over to our website where you can find all of the information about this campaign, from backstories to setting. All the links will be in the description down below. Thank you for listening.